Will you marry me? Certainly. Mrs. Redfern, Aaron Sloan, we meet at last. We have to fight. That's why I printed the article, to fight, damn it. Mr. Chapel. She goes. Goodbye, Reed. I'm sure you'll be very happy with the new regime. We've got a lot in common. Tonight, I need you. After that, you can do whatever you want, but tonight you're mine, got it? I want you to meet Rex Thorne, Bryce's son, and my grandson. Oh, it's the gilt on the gingerbread, the icing on the cake. It's monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the make. The devil takes the hindmost, and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. Love. You could call it ambition, but someone must be greed. Don't want you for a friend if you're a friend in need. Not gonna tell the truth if you swallow a lie. I want the icing on the cake. Love. I just want to say, I know it's been a big shock to all of you. But after all these years on the outside, I'm so very glad to be back in the bosom of my family, where I belong. Now, just hang on. And I want to thank Olivia, grandmother, for her generosity and her love in accepting me into this family without a moment's hesitation or doubt. Thank you. I can't believe this. Brad? Springing something like this on us? There are questions. Proof? Is that what you want? If there is any. Of course you want proof. I could be anyone, couldn't I? Walking in off the street, claiming to be a Redfern. Mother? Thirty years ago, I got pregnant to your brother. It wasn't planned. The baby was adopted out. Well, that doesn't prove a thing. Sam knows. Ask Sam. It's the truth, Bradley. Hard though it may be to accept. When the child was born, it was adopted. I know. I arranged it. Look, he's a Redfern. How do I know that you and that child are the same person? How do you know? You could be anyone. We all know Rex Thorne, know what he's like. How do I know you haven't trumped this whole thing up? I sure It'd be you... a piece of cake, wouldn't it? The son and heir returns and bingo! The family fortune's yours. Well, you've got another thing coming, Sonny. Shall we move through to the dining room? Dinner is served. We can celebrate this very special occasion at the family table. Well, what do you think? I think I'm going to be sick. Hmm. After you, Uncle Brad. to go? I think so. Who knows what other skeletons will be dragged out of the closet before the evening's over. <laughs> I'm sorry. It should have been your night. Oh, we've got plenty of time for parties later. He stole your thunder, didn't he? You off too? I better, Dad. I want to see if Mum's okay. Have you told Mum yet? Not yet. Oh, good. I will. Might cheer her up. <laughs> night, Dad. Thanks for a really awful evening. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't too good, was it? I hope there aren't any more like him lurking around. Not that I know of. Just as long as I don't have to be nice to him. Excuse me. Mrs. Redfern? Olivia. I must get used to calling you that. Thank you very much for a lovely evening. Oh, thank you, dear. Come on, darling. Night, all. Good night, I'll just do. Now, can I get anyone a brandy? <laughs> Dinner was absolutely ghastly. Oh. Grandma made Dad crack open a few bottles of champagne, <laughs> which he could hardly drink. And Alistair kept laughing and kicking me under the table. <laughs> It was awful. Rex Thorne! He sat there like a Cheshire cat all night. I can't believe it. I won't really have to tell people that slimy toad's my cousin, will I? Oh, it's perfect. I'm sorry, darling, but Rex Thorne and your grandmother deserve each other. <laughs> she thinks he's the best thing in the world. Everything he said, she agreed with. Oh, and vice versa. Don't worry. Look, it's all so perfectly awful. I can understand why your father got upset. <laughs> I thought he was going to have another heart attack. <laughs> oh. Oh. Just as long as Olivia doesn't do anything silly. Like cut him into a will. The way they're acting, I think they've already got a joint account. 
I mean, can you just imagine the schemes the two of them are going to get up to? Oh, Rex Thorne, my cousin. Yuck. All this excitement's worn me out. I'm off. Night. I completely forgot. Even more important news. Alastair is getting married. Huh? To Gemma. Wonders will never cease. Married? Thank you, Rita. Well, this is nice. Very nice. Don't you agree, Mother? Yes. Well, to look at you, you wouldn't think so. You should be happy for me. I am. I am. Good. Oh, you're tired. I'm sorry, I've talked far too much. Oh, no, it's just my age. I'd like to sit up longer with you. Oh, you want to go to bed? I think I shall. Well, I'll see you up the stairs then, shall I? Thank you, Rex. Good night, everybody. Good night. Been a long day. No, oh, and I've exhausted you. I'm, I'm still not convinced about this. It's all too convenient. Brad. Well, I'm afraid you'll just have to put up with it. Afraid? Why afraid? I'm not afraid. Anyone would think I was making it up. Why would I lie about a thing like this? Rex is my son. He's part of your family. You should be glad to see him. There's more to it than that. All we've got is your word for it. And mine. You want to believe it. Both of you. You had an illegitimate child you had to give up. And you connived to keep it secret. Brad, please. Of course you believe it. Accept him as the son and heir and it wipes the whole slate clean. He is... he is my son! Paper! I want to see it on paper! This is enough! Let's stop it right there! Well, she's tucked up for the night. Oh, no, not again. I've never known a woman cry so much. Well, I suppose I'll have to take you home and put you to bed, too. Come along. Good night, Sam, Uncle Brad, Aunt Caroline. We must do it again very soon. kids playing marbles. He's cheating and I say I'm going to tell Mum and he goes wild. He drags me down to the pond and shoves my head under and he holds it there. Oh, silly really. What an awful dream to have about your brother. It's how I remember him. Morning. Morning. Sorry to hear you lost a job. Thanks. <laughs> Don't seem to be able to hold on to much these days, do I? I thought you'd be round here pretty soon. Well, I couldn't let a juicy piece of news like this slip by. No, that'll be asking too much. Shall she tell you? About Rex or our son's marriage? Both. What do you think? I think it'll be good for him. And as for Rex... Don't get me started. I'm playing a call at the moment, just seeing which way he jumps. Well, I'd better get going. Me too. Oh, Mum's finally cracked, so just be easy on her, OK? Oh, me. You must be thrilled, Olivia. He's so... so like you. Thank you, Rita. And uh, coffee and sandwiches, I think. Don't you think so, Caro? I don't know, Rex, Maxine. Oh, not in looks, of course, but there's a certain quality, a kind of hard-nosed single-mindedness. He gets that from you, of course. What do you want, Maxine? I always maintain he found his level in that sordid little gossip column he wrote. I have guests arriving at any moment. 
Say what you have to say and go. I imagine you're going to be a great source of amusement to each other. Did you just come here to be unpleasant? Olivia, how could you? Besides you, I'm a novice. I merely came here to remind you in the nicest possible way that you do already have grandchildren. It seems to me, Maxine, that your only interest in the family is seeing that your children inherit. As long as the inheritance stays in the family and doesn't get frittered away by young men with beautiful eyes and a smooth line of chat. I don't like your insinuation. Rex Thorne is a thoroughly nasty piece of work. I don't want to hear this. But you're going to. He has a reputation for stepping on anything and anybody that gets in his way. He's a bad accuser, Olivia. He'll chat you up, soften you up and eat you up. I don't wonder you're prejudiced against him. For the first time in your life, you've been outwitted. I admire his tenacity. As I said, a strong family resemblance. If you have any intelligence, and despite everything I do believe you have, you'll realize that he is not interested in the family. He's only interested in your bank balance. Aren't you the early bird? That must make you the worm. What are you doing here, Maxine? Even ex-daughter-in-laws have visiting rights, Rex. This is a company vehicle you've got here. Ten out of ten. Isn't it time you returned it? I don't know. Should I? Yes, you should. Silly woman driver on the streets of Gotham City. <laughs> so this is it. Our last get together. I'm going to miss you all. <laughs> Believe it or not. No one to moan at anymore. Oh, as Julian would say, I prefer to look at it on a more positive angle. I look forward to a life of peace and harmony. No more chaos. No more bitchiness. Oh, not much fun. <laughs> You'll be back, Maxine. Too damn right. <laughs> and no more self-pity. I want to say... I want to say it's been one of the greatest pleasures of my life working with you all. I know at times that I've been difficult, <laughs> demanding even. <laughs> well, that's the name of the game. We're in a competitive business, and that's the only way I know how to keep the standards up. Oh, Panya. Oh, for God's sake, somebody give the girl a handkerchief. And now, so we all don't get too maudlin, I'd like to extend an invitation to you all to my son's wedding. Gemma hasn't told you. Gemma has accepted Alistair's hand in marriage. Well, lordy, lordy. That's wonderful. It's almost too uh, wonderful to be true. I hope you have a long and happy life together. Thank you. Congratulations. Alistair and I would like you all to come to the wedding. Yes, so... well, that's enough of that. You people have another and bigger wedding to come to terms with. I'm referring, of course, to the marriage between Gloss and Electra. And for those of you who decide to stay with the family, I sincerely hope that you will continue to work well and closely together. From the beginning of my time here, I've worked hard to instill a sense of unity amongst my staff. But it seems that some people don't have the welfare of their workmates at heart. Some people are dark horses, indeed. Some people will do anything to enhance their own and others' careers. You do it all yourself? Oh, just the choosing and trimming. I get someone in to do the heavy work, of course. Oh, it's beautiful. Charming. Mm. Yes. Perhaps you'll let me help you sometime. I'd like that. You know, I just can't get over it. Over what? We're so alike. We get on so well. Oh. Doesn't surprise me, although I doubt I have your marvellous head for business. Nonsense. If you're anything like your father, you're already streets ahead of me. <laughs> if only he'd lived on, who knows? Brad does his best, but Bryce was the one with the potential. 
Brad looks after the family business. Sam takes care of the major enterprises. I wonder, look, this may seem impertinent of me, but, well, I'd like to learn everything I can about my new family. Where would you like to start? <laughs> you already know me very well. Well, Redfern Construction, to begin with. I'd be disappointed if you weren't interested. Oh, just normal curiosity. Oh, yes. No, Rex. I fully expect you to take part in family affairs. In fact, I'm looking forward to it. Let's start right away, shall we? I can't believe you didn't know what was going on. But I didn't. You sat back and you watched our magazine going down the river to a bunch of con men who've only got one thing in mind. I don't like it either. Well, then why didn't you let me on it? I'll tell you why. Because the one person who's going to benefit out of all of this is your beloved son. I've given 15 years of my life for this magazine. Put up with your foul moods, your bad manners, your complete disregard for other people's feelings. And at the end of the day, gone home to an empty house. That's not my concern. You cannot accuse me of connivance with the people at Electra. Who happen to include your son. Yes, my son. So why the hell the big state secret? I mean, if you weren't working hand in glove with him, couldn't we all share in your joyous news? Because I was torn. For all these years, he's been a fantasy, a memory. Sometimes it was like I'd dreamt him, you know? I couldn't get a... I had nothing to... Then he walks in the door. I needed time to adjust, time to get to know him. Well, you tried cramming 30 years into the odd hour snatched here and there. And because it was Rex, I had to reassess everything I felt about him. So much has happened. Rex, the magazine, you losing your job. I've been trying to hang on. If I hadn't, I think I would have gone mad. Your father was a funny little boy. He loved secrets. Douglas and I used to laugh about it. I remember once he organized the gardener to build him a play hut in amongst the trees. Nobody was allowed inside. Well, not even his brother. Oh, least of all his brother. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. I must be boring you. No, I like it. It fills in the gaps. But it must be painful for you, remembering the past. On the contrary. It reminds me of the happy days. I do appreciate all this. Nonsense. The day they found the wreckage of Bryce's yacht was the saddest day of my life. The day I found you was the happiest. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my father must have loved living here. It's so peaceful. Quite different to what I'm used to. Your, your parents, they must have had to work very hard. Well, they meant well. But let's not dwell on my unfortunate past. The present is much more exciting. This is something else. Ah, oh, a bloke like me could live here quite happily. <laughs> Believe you me. I hope you can forgive me, Bridget. I was thoughtless and cruel. I suppose it must have looked bad. I don't know. Do you know, so much has happened lately. My judgment seems to have gone out of the window. I'm getting used to it. Your ex-husband gave his good last night from different motives. Oh, I can imagine. My son's not the most popular person in the world, is he? No, not really. Although I imagine that's the least of Brad's worries. He feels usurped. Maybe. He's always carried Bryce's memory like a cross. Brad was never able to live up to Olivia's memories of Bryce. He always clammed up whenever Bryce's name was mentioned. But I always knew there was something there, something that troubled him. The new chairman of the board wishes to address the staff. I'm not stopping him. Alone. Oh. Here's magazine. What's left of it? I've got a wedding to arrange. Yeah, it's a bit hard to believe. Oh, say, honestly, my family's the pits. 
Not all of them. <laughs> and you should have seen the way Dad reacted as though he'd seen a ghost. Oh, but Grandma is over the moon. Well, she would be. She's always painted Uncle Bryce as this absolutely wonderful man who can do no wrong. And now sexy Rexy turns up as his son. It must be hard for you to, to comprehend. I mean, Rex oh, being your cousin. Worse, Alistair and Gemma are getting married. Gloss Gemma. Who else? God, amazing, eh? She must be mad. Maybe she loves him. Mm. I love you. You know that, don't you, Chelsea? There's something I want to tell you. Mm -hmm. I've been offered a job. Oh, that's neat. Where? In Milan, a fashion house. Assistant to the assistant. But it's a start. Simon, I'm really happy for you. When? Beginning of the month. The thing is, Chelsea, I want you to come with me. I made the house over to you on your marriage because I truly wanted you to have it. And we're very grateful, Olivia. No, no, I don't want gratitude. I wanted to do something for you both, to, for Brad's marriage to you to, to have the best possible start. And you were kind enough to let an old lady stay on. Oh, Mother, please. Uh, I'm sorry. I know I'm asking a very big favour, but it would be very important to me to have Rex living here with me. Why don't you ask the rest of the city to move in while you're at it? Don't be facetious, Brad. This is important to me. I wouldn't ask you otherwise. Why do you want Rex to move in, Olivia? Well, it may seem strange Ridiculous. To you, but it would seem like having Bryce back again. Heaven preserve us. And more than that, it would give me a chance to make up for all those lost years when that poor boy was out in the cold. Mother, really? Rex Thorne has done very nicely for himself, thank you very much. He's quite capable of looking after himself. You don't understand, Brad. I want to. I know you don't like him very much. You don't see the same qualities in him that I do. But perhaps if he were under the same roof for a period of time, you'd change your mind. What would you do if I said no? Well, I'd... I'd just have to accept it. Godmother, you're pathetic. You'll do anything to get your own way. We're not going to say no. You can tell Rex he can move in for the time being. Oh, thank you, Caro. I knew you'd understand. Thank you. Thank you both. Had a raise. Don't be bold. I've done what any woman does in times of stress. I've gone shopping. And you can take that away. I'm not going to drown my sorrows in the demon drink. I need all my wits about me. Hello, darling. Mm. Hello, Maxine. How are you? Fine. Get me a drink, will you? Uh-uh. Margarita. <coughs> I'm so glad you're pleased about the wedding. I wanted you to be pleased. You are? For God's sake, why? I'm going to be your daughter-in-law. Oh, spare me, Gemma. You'll be producing babies for me next. Maxine, at least you could <coughs> pretend to be interested. Then you can start by dropping the Housewife of the Year act. I'm a big girl, Gemma. I know an opportunist when I see one. I'm not but don't get me wrong. I've got nothing against the marriage. If that's what you want, then it's fine by me. There's only one thing I ask. What's that? Honesty. Oh, I'm going. I suddenly <coughs> seem to have lost my appetite. It's such a pity you missed the meeting today. It was very interesting. Gloss and Electra have got a new editor-in-chief, and you'll never guess who it is. Rex Thorne. Dear me, Gemma. Seems you miscalculated. You seem to have picked the wrong wet button. It's a beautiful idea. And I love you for it, but it wouldn't seem right. Right? For me. I thought we had something special. Simon. We could have a wonderful life together in Italy. It could be ghastly. Neither respect the language. What would I do? You could get modeling work. If I don't, I couldn't even keep house for you. I can't cook. It's a beautiful idea, but I'd give us about two weeks before we started climbing the walls. 
not ready for a moment's madness in Italy. Anyway, I'm too young. There's probably a law against it. Look, the last thing I want is for you to be hurt. I could pay for some cooking lessons. It's not a bad idea. You'll need them. You really mean it, don't you? I'm gonna miss you. A postcard from Milan isn't much compensation for the real thing, is it? No. Not nearly enough. It's the only way, isn't it? And at least with him in the house, we can keep an eye on him. And with Olivia, not well. You're right. She is right. It's a good idea, Caro. But I don't envy you facing Rick Thorne every morning. I understand he made his presence felt at the office. Yes, Olivia went with him and she stood there smiling fondly as he threw his weight around, asked questions about things that were none of his business and was generally obnoxious. Do you really think he entertains ideas in that direction? Why not? There's a lot of money in our companies. Why can't Mother see him for what he really is? Because she's blinded by the wonder of it all. Who says history never repeated itself? Where is he now? With Mother. This is ridiculous. We can't hide up here forever. I spent a great deal of time and energy keeping that boy at arm's length. Because I knew the damage he could do to this family if he got too close. Knowing him as I do, as we all do, we have to move and move fast. I'm sorry I didn't come back with you earlier. I had to look in at Electra. And what did you think of the Redfern companies? Interesting. Is that all? Well, you must know I've taken a keen interest in them for some time. Naturally. I've read everything I could, watched, listened, talked to people. And now you've seen everything for yourself. Yes. And? Look, the last thing I want to do now is to sow seeds of doubt, especially in a situation like this. What is it? There have been rumours. Oh, look, I really don't think I should be saying this. Please, go on. If it's anything I should know about, I want to hear. All right. But I wish to God it wasn't me that had to tell you. For quite some time, there have been whispers of bribes, backhanders. Oh, show me the successful business that runs it by the book. Well, this is different. You know what Queen Street's like. You can't cross the road without everyone knowing. Redfern Construction has a reputation for being well, not exactly kosher in its business dealings. Or rather, one person in particular, Sam Wyeth. I'm sorry, I know you're close. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me something dreadful. I wouldn't worry about anything you might hear about Sam Wyeth. I'd trust him with my life. Do you? Yeah. Sam may have bent the rules once or twice, sometimes at my direction, but there's not a bad bone in his body. Well, I'd hate to disillusion you, but I don't think he has your best interests at heart. Oh, Sam's always told me everything that was going on. He has? Then how come he kept me a secret for 30 years? You don't have to do this, you know. Do what? All this prenuptial crap. The obligatory chair. Well, I want to. Despite appearances, I care about you. I want you to be happy and I want to make sure you're doing the right thing. You must be the only mother in the world who's worrying because her son's getting married. You should be glad I'm conforming. Well, I've never seen you as a conforming type. Marriage is the in thing for the late oh. 80s. Monogamy's all the rage. But just because he's fashionable. There are plenty of good reasons, wouldn't you say? I've never seen marriage as a preventative measure. <laughs> There's more to it than that. Does she love you? A marriage without love? I think it's the best way for us both to get what we want. We understand each other. She's a tough little girl. Mm -hmm. That's why I like her. There are some people who might say that you're trading one mother figure for another. Might they? Do you mind? No. Do you? It's your life. Exactly. Oh, what are they? Tiger balls. Mmm, terrific. But I don't somehow think the holistic approach is the one Rex had in mind for Gloss. But they said more recipes. Yes, but think more Alison Holst. You'll love it. Why? Where will you be? Oh, down the road I'll lay money on it. No. Rex won't want me around. Why not? Too many sordid memories. Don't worry. It'll all work out for the best. What about you? Will you stay on? It's meant to be. It's meant to be. And you, I suppose you'll be all right. In what way, Magda? Well, surely it hasn't escaped your notice, Gemma, that there are certain advantages to being a Redfern. A sweet life from now until eternity. I'm not the only one. Bridget's going to have it pretty cushy too, aren't you, Bridget? Now that your long-lost son's been appointed our editor-in-chief. What? I'll get her. Trust you to let the cat out of the bag. 
See what happens when you align yourself with the Red Fen family? You turn into a first class bitch. There, take those home. I will. They're lovely. You know, in my day, it wasn't done for a girl to give a man flowers. Oh, anything goes these days, Grandmother. <laughs> I'm really sorry I said those things about Sam. Don't. I know what he means to you. I hope you'll always speak your mind to me. Well, it's going to look like... Well, look, I, I wouldn't want people to think that I'm a troublemaker. There's only one opinion that matters in this family, and that's mine. Oh, maybe I've got it all wrong. Maybe it is nothing but rumour. Well, there is sometimes some substance in a rumour. Let's hope this time is an exception. Olivia, it's time we talked. Oh? About Rex Thorne. If you're going to criticise him, I don't want to hear. There are things you must know. You've really got it in for him, haven't you? All of you. He'll cause endless trouble. You're doing it again. What? Interfering. This is family, Sam. It's none of your business. When he starts cross-examining my employees, it becomes my business. Whose employees? Now, shouldn't you be down at the office? I'd like to know there's somebody there keeping an eye on things. It belonged to my parents. I inherited it when they died. Just as well, the way property prices are in this town. Feels nice. Look, uh, I don't want to keep you. It's okay. It sometimes helps to talk. It must have been hard for you. We, we didn't flaunt it the way girls do nowadays. But at least you've got him back again. That's all that matters. Yes. I suppose I felt I had to make it up to my parents, so I came back here and tried to put it out of my mind. And did you? Not altogether. When I was growing up, I took it for granted that I'd get married and have a family like everyone else. <laughs> Life changes. Uh, look, you don't want to hear all this. <laughs> no, no, it's interesting. Thank you for bringing me home. It was sweet of you. Bridget, I don't have to go. I'm sure you've got work to do. Will you be in tomorrow? Oh, yes. This won't keep me away. See you then. Yes, see you. Good afternoon, staff. Good afternoon, Mr. Thorne. I hope you're not thinking of knocking off, Magda. I like my people to put in a full day. Certainly not. I was just looking for my knitting. Knitting? Well, I thought I'd try knitting a pole house and then writing a scintillating piece on it for our readers. Isn't that the sort of thing you want, Rex? Hello, Rex. Well, at least somebody's working. Can we be of any help, or are you just flexing a few editorial muscles? What I do from now on, Magda, will be absolutely none of your business. <laughs> oh, I'm sure of that. But you don't have to show off for our benefit, you know. We all belong to you now. Yes, you do. Ah, it's you. I'm glad to see you're removing your bits and pieces. For one ghastly moment, I thought I'd be inheriting them. Did you? The furniture will have to go, of course. You've managed to make this place look like a Pakaranga bungalow, Maxine. I prefer a more minimalist look myself. To match your mind. And I'll have the car keys. There'll be a bill in the mail from my panel beater. Whatever. It was worth it. Mr. Feek, Mr. Stower. These two gentlemen are here to escort you from the premises. If you ever set foot in this building again, you'll be arrested and charged with trespass. Your personal possessions will be forwarded to you. This is a little over the top, isn't it, Rex? <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. Anya! We'd like a traditional wedding. The church, the flowers. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. This is rather sudden. I'm not pregnant. It's nice to know. So many young people nowadays seem quite content with a quick dash to the registry office. Oh, not me. 
I think this is a day to remember. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Olivia, I'd like to ask a favor of you. Could we... Would it put you out too much if we had the reception here? Well, of course not. I'd be delighted. There's nothing I like better than a big family celebration. Well, that's what I think, too. Of course, you and Alastair would have to talk to Brad about it. It's his house, after all. Oh, I will, I will. I just wanted to ask you first. Well, I'm flattered. And your parents? They'll go along with whatever we decide. Well, that sounds wonderful. Would you have time... I mean, would you mind going through all the planning and the details with me? It would be my pleasure, Gemma. Thank you. And there's just one more thing. Alistair and I would like to ask Rex to stand up as our best man. Rex. Well, that's a very sweet thought. How do you think he'd react? I'm sure he'd be delighted. And that would be a perfect way to introduce him and welcome him to the family publicly. Thank you, Gemma. Hi. We'd like to talk to you about what happened. About Rex and Bryce. I'm sorry about what happened last night. You'll have to excuse the mess. It's quite obvious that it's time for a change in your life. You've simply created a new opportunity for yourself. By hell, I was given the boot. We create what we need in life, what's best for us at any given moment. Mum had nothing to do with it. Your mother's thoughts and beliefs in the past have created the change in direction. It's very simple. Look, here we are, the three of us sitting around this table. Now, what we've thought and believed in the past has brought us to this moment, and all the moments leading up to this moment. I haven't the foggiest idea what you're talking about. No, perhaps not. Well, look at it this way. Everything comes to an end in order to make way for something better. Julian, get out. Of course. I'm sorry I've stayed so long. But do think about what I've said, because there is some truth in it. OK. I'll see myself out. Why didn't they ever find Bryce's body? Don't. I can't bear to think about it. I'd prefer to think of him when he was alive. You'd have been proud of him. I am. He was so beautiful, so bright, intelligent. I used to call him my golden boy. Everybody loved him, except Brad. There was something wrong there. I don't know what. But he used to say the most terrible things about him. But then, Brad has always been a strange boy. He lacked Bryce's confidence somehow. You see? You see? Done! Anything you do, I'm watching. Do anything you say, and there'll be more of us. Ah! As a little kid, my earliest memories are always being anxious and frightened around him. I always seem to be fighting for my life. <sighs> Bryce could charm the birds out of the trees. And as for Mother and Dad, they were always much more prepared to believe him than me. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't come around here to it's talk all right. About... It's just all this stuff with Rex. It's brought it all back. I know. The only time I can remember seeing Bryce was when I was about six. It's very vague. But I remember my mother in a complete flap. He just turned up on the doorstep. He seemed so tall. I was completely overawed. Years later, she told me why he'd come. He wanted to have one look at me. Poor Bryce. To say goodbye. Goodbye? I'm not sure I should be telling you this, but he was frightened for his life. From what he told my mother, it seemed that someone was trying to kill him. Someone inside the family circle. Oh, but that's dreadful. Who, who? Oh, look, I really don't think I should tell you. Come on, young man. If you know anything, you must tell me. I never wanted to have to say this. But when I was being bribed to stay away from you, it became clear to me pretty quickly who my father was afraid of. Sam Wyeth. Bryce was 20. I was 17. He drove the latest model car, dressed beautifully. He was the most elegant thing I'd ever seen. And girls, well, they hung off him. Then he started hanging around me. No one was more surprised than I was. I probably made him feel good. I was so overwhelmed by him. And when he was thoughtless and cruel to other people, I made excuses for him, just like everyone else did. One night, we'd been to see Elvis Presley in Jailhouse Rock at the Hollywood Cinema, and we were driving home. 
Bryce took the long way around. We ended up in this little side street. Bridget, you don't have to. I want to. We ended up in this little side street. Bryce stopped the car and we started necking. Well, we'd done it before, but it had never gone very far. I didn't know what was happening. I couldn't believe. Well, I suppose you never think that sort of thing can ever happen to you. Well, he was just so angry and he hurt me. Why didn't you tell someone? Things were different in those days. Nice girls didn't do things like that. Anyway, it never really occurred to me that I'd been raped. I somehow thought it was my fault. Well, the next thing, I found out that I was pregnant. I tried to ignore it. I suppose I hoped it would go away. Silly. When I told Bryce, he was furious. Didn't want to see me again. The next thing that happened, I was sent down south to have the baby, and my parents were silenced with a big fat check. And when the baby was born, it was all taken out of my hands. Everything happened around me. It was as if I didn't exist. Good old Sam even arranged the adoption. Then I went home. I'm very sorry. I thought it was a part of my life that was over and done with. I dreamt about finding him, but I never expected... Well, I never expected he would be so like his father. I can't tell you how sorry I am. How responsible I feel for having unleashed this monster on you all. It has come to my attention that there are certain things that you're accountable for. As head of this family and head of the firm, I have every right to ask you to explain yourself. You'll forgive me, Olivia, if I'm a little confused. What exactly is it you want to know? All I've heard so far are vague accusations of corrupt business practices. When I hear that the whole city is abuzz with the way Sam Wyeth is running Redfern Construction... Let I... me guess where that came from. My grandson has had the courage to tell me what nobody else would. Then I've been guilty of accepting backhanders and bribes? And deception. Oh, Olivia, if only you could listen to yourself for a moment. It's absolute nonsense. Do you deny that you've used underhand methods to gain your own ends? You know perfectly well that I do on occasions. You yourself have been complicit in most of these arrangements. If I'm to believe what I hear, you've been cheating this family for years. You mind telling me how? You deceived me over my son's existence. Isn't that enough? And you use my money to keep those concerned quiet. Oh, so this is what this is all you about. You kept him from me. I did not do it to deceive you. The point is you did it. It cost me a great deal, Olivia. I did it for you. Because I loved you. How can I believe anything you say now? I did it to protect you. From what? The truth, that Bryce was nothing but a callous, conniving... Well, that confirms what I know about you. Olivia, please. I'm sorry. There's no point in pursuing this matter any further. I've made up my mind. I can no longer trust you, Sam Wyeth. You're fired. I never want to see you again. Sorry we stayed so long. I'm glad you did. It helps to talk. Yeah. Thank you, Bridget. If ever there's anything we can do. Oh, there's nothing you can do. Well, at least we got to know each other better. I'm glad you could come. You sure you'll be all right on your own? <laughs> it's what I'm best at. This is something only I can sort out. And believe me, I will. I'm fine now. I'll get the door. Good night. Good night. Bye. What about Greece? Or Rome? Oh, well, it would be a great place for a honeymoon. <laughs> All that history and sightseeing, do a bit of shopping. I think we've lived it a bit lately, that. I don't see why. All you do is pack your bags, jump on a plane. It's that easy. I just want to stay a bit closer for home. Why? I want to see what happens at Glotz. Oh, Gemma. You're so romantic. <laughs> I think it's someone for you. I'll leave you to it. Doc. Jasmine told me. Is it true? What are you doing, Gemma? I know you don't love her. You don't know anything of the sort. He can't do it. He's shallow, thoughtless. Look, Mark, if you come here to criticise Alistair, you can leave. All right. What are you doing here? 
I needed to know for myself. I just couldn't believe you're doing something so stupid. I know what I'm doing. You're special, Gemma. I don't like what's happening to you. It's too bad. You've changed. You know that? You used to care about people. Go out of your way to be honest with them. And more than that, you were honest with yourself. But that's what I love most about you. You were strong, straight. <coughs> Maybe only someone who knows you as well as I do can see the difference. And there's a big difference. Ambition's fine, Jim. But not when you start to use people. I don't want to hear any more. You're going to. You've got greedy. That's why you're marrying Alistair Redford. Don't worry. I won't spill the beans. But I'll always know. You're gonna have to live with it. I hope it's worth it, Gemma. I really do. Mr. Sloan, well, well. Don't tell me you just happen to be in the neighborhood. I know what I'm doing. Drink? No. Well, if you're just going to look around the apartment, I'm going to bed. Now, don't do that. Ah, the happy family. Now, Brad doesn't change, does he? I mean, he's older, of course, but, well, not really any different. This is where I meant to ask you how you know Brad, right? If you like. How do you know Brad? <laughs> All right. I'll play it your way. I suppose he still talks in his sleep, does he? I wouldn't know. I haven't lived with him for a long time. Me neither. He's always been such a prat. What do you want? I bet you that he is still afraid of water. Mr. Sloan, who are you? You tell me. If it makes you happy. Oh, it will. It will. You're the golden boy returned from the dead. You're Bryce Redfern. Oh, it's the gilt on the gingerbread, the icing on the cake. It's monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the main. The devil takes the hindmost and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. If you swallow a lie, I want the ice cream. 